The British Museum is famous for its sculpture from Egypt and Greece and Rome, but it collects things from all over the world, including this guy. The most striking thing is how tall he is, right? Like, he's nearly nine feet tall. Imagine how tall he'd be if he had legs. So he has this really heavy brow, deep eye sockets, and a very strong jaw. His mouth is turned down, he looks very stern. He has long ears and big flared nostrils. You can see they've got a kind of curl to them. And then he's got the collarbone and his little nipples and the rest of him just sort of tails away. He's got little arms, but barely any indication of hands. These kinds of statues are called Moai and this one's name is Hoa Hakananaya, which means lost or stolen friend. Easter Island is properly called Rapa Nui. It's in the Pacific Ocean. It's about half the size of the Isle of Wight. Now, if you've ever seen the movie Moana, you know that Polynesian people are amazing at boat building and navigation and currents and stars, and that is definitely true of the people on Rapa Nui. The next closest inhabited island is 1,300 miles away. They first arrived around 700 CE. Just for reference, it would take Europeans another thousand years to make it to Rapa Nui. They built these moai to commemorate important ancestors between 1000 and 1700 CE. This one originally stood with others at a sacred site called Arongo. He had his back to the sea, so he was watching inland over the island. He's made of basalt, which is really hard to carve and unforgiving if you get it wrong. Most moai are made out of softer rocks, but this sculptor had ambition. Originally, he would have been painted red and white with coral eyes that can be put in for ceremonies to wake him up. To this day, there are still about 900 moai remaining. Some standing, some fallen over. About half of them never left the quarry they were made in. And then sometime around the 17th century, they stopped being made. We don't really know why, but we know that the island was pretty deforested and so people couldn't make canoes or go fishing anymore. Maybe people thought that the moai couldn't protect them anymore. So our Hoahaka Nanaya got some changes. So he has these carvings on the back that were added later and you can see they're a lot shallower and a little hard to pick out. They relate to a new game in town called the Birdman Cult which started sometime after 1400. Every year there was a competition to collect the egg of a bird called the sooty tern. And you'd swim out to Moto Nui Island and bring it back without breaking it. And whoever got back first would get a ceremonial paddle and they would represent the god Make Make for the year. So there are two humans with bird heads. If you look at his shoulders, their heads are facing each other on the back of his neck. And then on the back of the head are two ceremonial paddles, one of which kind of has Hoa's face. These carvings would originally have been painted, so they'd be easier to see, but they're certainly a lot less confident than the carvings on Hoa's face. Rather than big, broad strokes, they're using little details. When Christianity arrived on the island in the 19th century, a lot of Moai were toppled over, and it seems like they were sort of forgotten about. Hoa was collected by a Royal Navy captain called Richard Ashmore Powell, who found it halfway buried. According to the British Museum, it was given as a gift by the islanders, who by this time had converted to Christianity, which forbade traditional practices like the Moai. Dozens of Moai were removed from Rapa Nui at this time, and many have ended up in museums all over the world. But the governor of Rapa Nui has asked the Hoa Hakananaya back. Many islanders, like Carlos Edmonds, believe that the statues are an incarnation of their ancestors and that Hoa was unlawfully taken. On the other hand, Dr Wayne Nagata, a Maori scholar, says that minority cultures need majority culture friends for protection and getting, say, European people interested in Moai is one way of doing that. People can't help protect something they've never heard of. The British Museum is also keen to point out that six million people visit them every year, meaning a lot of people are learning about a culture they wouldn't experience at all otherwise. But he also says that museums have a responsibility to connect Indigenous people with their sacred objects, not present them disconnected from their culture.
one local sculptor called Benedicto Tuki has even offered to make an exact replica for the museum. Talks are still in progress. A local politician called Pedro Edmonds Power says that getting Hoa back is meaningless if Rapa Nui doesn't have the resources to preserve him, and that he'd prefer the British Museum to keep him and instead send money to Rapa Nui or expertise to help preserve the Moai that are still there, open to the elements. So it's definitely not as simple as just dropping Hoa off on the doorstep and being like, here's your problem now, bye! Rapa Nui needs help and expert funding to preserve all sorts of traditional practices, many of which have been lost already.